Hi all, in this video, let's understand how the service worker works, how to implement it, what are its life cycle methods, and uh, what are the points to be noted and what are its use cases. So let's uh, understand step by step. So the first point is what are the service workers and how these, what are the basic use cases for this service workers. So service worker is also a type of uh, web worker. So this is also a type of a worker. So which will run in a separate thread. It will not work in the main thread. So that's the first point for the service worker. So the common use cases of using the service worker is, so we can use the service workers to optimize the offline experience. So if there a network is low, if there is no network, if the browser is in offline mode, then we can use this offline rich experience. So in these cases, you can use the service workers. Also, we can use the service workers for the push notifications. Uh, you can uh, push the notifications uh, so that the users can understand the latest versions or any of sort of updates from us. So in this case also, you can use the uh, service workers. So all these th things or these will work behind the screens. I mean, th this will, these services, service worker will work apart from the main thread. It will run in the background. So you can also uh, sync up the backup data, the background. It will work in the ba background. It will sync the data when you wanted to sync up some uh, data backups, that also can be achieved with the help of the service worker. So this is the main use cases of the service workers. So now let's understand for some points while you are using service workers, let's understand some points. So the service worker is not blocking. So it will not block the UI because it is working in a separate thread, not in a main thread of JavaScript. So it is designed fully in an asynchronous way. So that's the first point. As this is designed in the asynchronous way, what the things, the uh, concepts like uh, which work in a synchronous mode, like local storage, XML, HTTP request, these are synchronous way of uh, things. So this cannot be used in the service workers. And the third thing is, as service workers is in a, or working in a separate thread, it will not have direct access to the DOM. It can't manipulate the DOM, DOM object or a window object. And the fourth point is service workers only run over HTTPS protocol. It means uh, this is because uh, to reduce or to avoid the men in the middle attack. So it will only work in the HTTPS. Whereas if you want to check in the local host, it will work in the local host. Yep. Also, we'll uh, try to understand some service worker life cycle, how it, how it works. So in this example, we'll be seeing the offline optimized experience. So we can try these two examples, how the service workers work, but I will explain the offline optimized experience. So to check whether the browser is supported in the service worker or not, you, you need to use this. So service worker in navigator. If this is not there, it means our browser is not supporting the service worker. So that's the first point. So the second thing is on load. So this is an a uh, window dot add event listener. So in load event, you are trying to register the service worker to the browser. So in the, we are discussing about the service worker life cycle methods. In that life cycle, the first life cycle is registration. You're going to register your service worker to the browser that you are doing in the main JavaScript code. So when the first JavaScript code is loaded in that on load event, you are trying to load your register service worker. So this is the path you're going to do. So the file should be at the root level. If the file is at the root level, then this service worker can handle all the fetch events at this root level. All the fetch events can, can be handled at the root level because this service worker is at the root level. If you're giving this service worker file in a deep level like this, in a, another folder like examples, and in that folder, if you're giving like this, then this service worker can only have access to the fetch events of this folder level. It will not access to the root level. Only it can uh, uh, event uh, handle the events of this folder level fetch events. So that's the reason it's good to give the service worker to the root level directory so that it can handle all the fetch events throughout the application. So this is the first step. The first step is the registration step that you need to do in the main JavaScript file. You, you need to check whether it is, your browser is supporting the service worker or not. If it is supporting, then in the load event, you're going to register like navigator, service worker, 
register and you are registering your service worker it means you are going to download your service worker at this point the browser will successfully register this the service worker will register in the browser so if it is successfully registered if this path is not available it will go into the error state so this is a promise okay uh, registering is a promise from here we can uh, write if the success it will go to this path so just uh, you can console it uh, no need to do big things here because just to, our aim is to register the service worker here so the second steps are like installation step and the third step is the activation step so let's see that how we are going to install and activate so for this you need to have you need to go and write the code in the service worker the second step is the installation step so we'll go back to the installation step here in the service worker so for that you need to have one file so here self is nothing but a window window event window this self all are same here so we'll be using self here self dot add event listen install so this is the sec second step of service worker here what we are doing is we are trying to install all the dependencies so in sense at the first phrase if the application loads what this service worker do will will we are saying that we are giving one catchy name what we are doing here exactly is we are trying to create one catchy it means we are giving one name to the catchy and we are giving a list of files which we want to catch so that if the application goes offline also we can serve these files through the catchy so that's the main objective here what we are doing so for that reason we are naming a catchy name so this can be anything so this is a v1 is just the first version of the catch name so and here you need to give all the file names which you want to save in the catch so under this uh, catch name all these files will be saved catched okay so that is what we need to do these files if all these files are downloaded successfully then only the service worker installation step is successfully done if any of the file is not available from the server then this step would be failed so that is what happens so let's see the uh, the code one by one line so when it comes to the second uh, step of a service worker installation install this is the event so when the service worker is successfully registered then the second step is install event would be triggered automatically and what it does is it will wait until and the catch is dot open it will open the catchy with the name which we have given so it will open with that name and it will try to catch the events all the files so what all the files you have kept so it will try to catch all these files in a catch okay so if any of the file is failed so as this is a promise so here there would be one more dot error okay our function will go to this error if the files are failed if any of the file is not there it will go to the this installation step would be failed if all the files are available then only this installation step would be success in this installation step what we are going to do is in the first load when the application loads initially we are creating a catchy and we are holding all these files in the catchy so that if the uh, if the application or the website is went into the offline also we can serve these files from the catchy so that's the main motto fine so that you can do like this so let's check that in the browser uh, so far so the first step is so here you can see the service worker registration is successfully okay the service worker is registered successfully the browser is able to download this service worker and later on the catch is open but here if you see add all so this part is failed the installation part is failed because we have we don't have all these files like main.css image and uh, offline pages 404 page all these pages are not available so that's the reason the installation step is failed so we need to keep in mind what exactly we want to catch so that we uh, can provide the offline experience if you're not sure the, you can remove the files okay so uh, for the demo purpose i am removing all these files so okay so this is what so i'm just keeping one file so that uh, this index.js is available so that the, this install step would be success success so that's the reason if you go here now the installation step is done the second step is done so the activate step so this is the third final service worker step so this event is triggered when you want to execute your code in the offline okay so now your service worker is in offline so then what you wanted to do so that code you can keep in this list so ideally the service worker here acts as an 
uh, intercept between the network request okay between the network request and the browser cache so and it will fetch the things from the browser cache so when the service worker is in offline and if you want to uh, use some features that type of code you can write here okay also with the uh, not only activate event you will be having push event and sync event as well to use the push notifications you can use the push event and to use a background data synchronization you can use the sync event as well so uh, both the events also available for us so now if all things you do like this so you'll be able to in the application tab you will be having and service worker here if you click the service worker all the details related to that would be available here so this is a service worker okay this is our service worker in the service worker if you click offline then you can verify your application in the offline mode and you can check how your service worker is working okay and in that phrase the activate code would be working okay the next step is if you want to uh, check the push notifications or a background sync then you need to implement one more event with the push and you can check in uh, you can test that push notification with the help of this push event and also if you want to check the sync background sync you can write one more event with the sync and you can check with this sync so this is what you can do with the service worker once all these things you do in the service worker so we have created a catch earlier so where does that catch event so you can check that catch here in the catch storage you will be having that catch name so this is the catch name we have given so this is the name of the catch we have created and this is the file we have uh, stored in our catch so from the next time the application will not go to the network call it will not do any fetch call for this it will pick from the catch so this is what happens so let's see here so if you want to do any fetch call how it happens as we have declared the service worker at the root level each and every fetch call in the application will go through this fetch call first it will go to this fetch call whatever the fetch call you do it will go to this fetch call here what you are doing is event dot respond with so this is a service worker event so now here in the catch we are trying to check whether the request which you have sent if it matches and if you have the response here so we'll be sending that response back from the catchy okay if that event is not there we'll do the real fetch call so this is how the service worker works first it will check in the whether it is available in the catchy or not if it is not available then it will do a fetch call so this is how it will work so if you don't want if you want to catch the fetch responses as well then this and this you can use so uh, let me explain this code as well uh, it means you are doing the first uh, fetch call so first time you you got okay you came here so if the response is not available so you'll uh, check whether the request is available in the catchy or not so if the request is not available here the event dot request is nothing but this index dot js it means we are requesting this index dot js from the server so now we are checking whether this index dot js is available in the catchy or not if that is available we'll return that from the catchy if that is not available then we will be doing the fetch call so we we'll, you will be doing the real fetch call and once that fetch call is done and if it is successful then now what we are going to do is we are copying that fetch call i mean we are copying that response again into the same catch we are again opening the catch and we are keeping that response the uh, recent request as a key and the response as a value we are keeping that in the catch so that from the next time if you do the same request it will not go to the fetch call it will return back from the catch so that's the main uh, thing so in this way we can achieve the offline optimized experience so once this is done so how to update this service workers so as a uh, every time if you do a fetch call you will you if you are getting that from the catch so when when there is an any updates to the real request so how we are going to update the service worker for that we have a thing like we can to update the service worker there are two things we have the first thing is manually you can go here and you can delete here so manually you can delete your catchy so this is the one step you can do the second step is you you need to deploy your code to the server 
the latest version of the code you need to deploy to the server. So then the browser can understand this is not the latest code and it will not take the from the uh, browser catchy and it will take from the latest code from the server and it will replace that here. So that is what uh, that is how the service worker updating will work. If you deploy your latest code with that deployed code, if you push the latest code in your server, so then it will understand that is the latest code and then the browser will not take this code from the uh, catchy it will take the latest code from the server itself so that is how the service worker will work so these are the three steps so the registration step we need to do at the main javascript file it is just we are registering our service worker file like this and the installation step is the install event where you will be having you will be uh, giving a catch name and what all the files you wanted to catch so this is an installation step and uh, there are some events like activate and push and sync so these events you can use uh, according to your business like if you want to uh, show offline if you want to show a push notifications if you want to do a background data backup sync up so based upon that requirement you can use these events accordingly and to have the fetch event so every time if you don't want to do a fetch call to the background uh, to the server you can do these things for each and every fetch call you can store that in the catchy and later on you can fetch that from the catchy instead of doing the fetch call to the server so this is also an event we have for the service worker so this is everything about service worker hope you understand the video thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos